And now we shall take a moment to thank our patrons. <laughs> Allison Connors. Carisha Dolan. Cheryl Eisenhower. Birdie Tam. Birdie Tam. Hi. JS. Natalie Curry. Katie Grant. Francie Dillon. Laura Reinsdorf. Leah Tab. And for this week's blessing, may your mind shatter before your parts. <laughs> This is The Mud Peddlers, a podcast where two nerdy ceramic artists share the behind the scenes of their worlds of clay. We're your hosts, Lindsay M. Dillon. And I am Dante of Earth Nation. All right, so today you guys, ladles and gentle spoons and all manner of fine cutlery, we are talking about feet. Yeah, we're talking, we're trying really hard not to make a foot fetish joke We're right now. real mature. Really hard. Yeah. Yes. I don't think that's the adjective you want to use right there. No, you're right. <laughs> you're right. <laughs> Sorry. I promise it's not like gonna be like this the entire episode. So, feet. Why are we talking about feet, Dante? We're talking about feet because I feel like there's so many, stu especially when you get into the intermediate phases, the feet that most of us learn to do when we trim, right? Mm -hmm. It's just like the common roundy yeah. feet on your cups. There's so yeah. many different types of feet. Yeah. It's insane. And it, it matters a lot for the weight, the presentation of the actual piece. And there's, I wouldn't say controversy, but there's definitely like some opinions. <laughs> some of which were previously held most fervently by you. Some of which, yeah, I've calmed down a little bit. But yeah. it's, only, it's only because like, I realized their utility now. Yeah. As for before, I was like, no, I was, I, I, I was on the path of a lot of like old head potters. Mm. That are like, nope, I was taught this way, so this must be the way it's done. <laughs> I'm lucky that it took me only a couple years to get my head out of there. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. now I'm on the path of like, no, everything has utility. It's just when and how you use it. Yes, yes. Yeah. So one of the one of the biggest things of kind of on those on those lines is like the big question of like, okay, do you trim the bottoms of your pots or do you not trim? To trim or not to trim? That is the question. That's definitely something in the pot. Like some people it's look i think even you agree with this yeah it's definitely pottery culture to when you pick up a pot we feel it we look at it and we almost always immediately look at the bottom oh undoubtedly you turn it upside down and you look at the feet right and we're looking for two things usually two mm. things we're looking for the signature yeah number one the maker's mark uh -huh. we're, and we're looking to see how well you took care of the bottom yes because just it's an old pottery adage that might have came from yoshio actually i don't know a lot of my stuff comes from yoshio <laughs> Where he was like, the parts of the pot that you cannot see are the most important ones. Because mm. if you took care of those, it shows the crafter actually actually cared about the piece. Yeah. And that, to me, always translated into, like, trim your bottoms. Mm -hmm. Take care of your bottoms. Um, but that's that's not really how it goes. Yeah, yeah. Because I think the, the like, cause some of my favorite, or one of my favorite mugs, which is a mug made by Sean Bill, mm -hmm. he, and, and with that particular cup, he didn't trim the bottom, but the bottom was still well taken care of. Like, right. I don't know what it's called. I think maybe you mentioned the term for this earlier, but he basically t looked like he took either, like, a a looped like wire tool yeah. or, like, a serrated tool or something. Anyway, there's a pattern on the bottom yes. to, to show, like... Yeah, there's like a pattern on the bottom of the cup. So even though even though it's not trimmed, there is still care and attention paid to the bottom of the foot. Absolutely. And I yeah. feel like yeah, and I feel like that's the more important part compared to whether you trim or not. But like Yeah. Like let's say let's say someone is thinking about whether to whether to trim or not. Like what do you think are some of the things to keep in mind about like trimming? Cuz like my first thought Yeah. is that okay, if I'm like if I was going to stop trimming the bottom of my feet, um, my biggest thing is that I would have to make sure that when I was raising the walls, mm -hmm. I left a lot less space both on the floor of the cup and on the bottom sides because normally I leave like maybe like a third of an inch of space Yeah. because I, I, I do, especially on my steins, like I actually trim away a decent amount of stuff to get right. that like the multiple lumps, lines, shapes. I get what you're saying. That, that it gives the, the bottom the flavor. The... Yeah, yeah, exactly. I get what you're saying. Well, I mean... There's two primary primary reasons that most people, like myself, trim the bottoms of their cups. And yeah. number one, it's to give it a space to touch the kiln shelf uh -huh. so that it doesn't run as much. Which you can you can do that with, like, non-trimmed bottoms. But it looks kind of weird when you have, like, something that touches the bottom of the kiln shelf and then you wipe away and sometimes there's a white space. Some oh, people Some people yeah. prefer that. 
Some people don't. I yeah, think. you're basically talking about like the the room that people leave for the glaze to move. Essentially. Yeah, essentially. Kind of what you're talking about? Yes. Yeah. yeah a yeah, lot yeah. of people make feet specifically to make space for that. Mm, and yes. You know, sometimes feet hide it. You know, if you're at a certain angle, you're like, oh, I can see the entire pot, but not the feet. Yeah. So the pot looks more complete in that way. Mm -hmm. The second one is that you you're really just mo like eighty percent of it. You're just leveling out the bottom of your cup. Yeah. That's it. When you when you wire it off, when you pull it off, you're honestly just leveling out your cup so it sits plumb. So it sits mm -hmm. level. That's, yeah. That's all you really need for trimming. Yeah. If you were to to do like the most basic level of trimming. Of trimming. Yeah. 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 And some people have a hard time with that because when they when they take their wire tool and they they unmarry, <laughs> lack of better unmarry. <laughs> Reason some real uh, when they divorce. Real, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when you divorce the cup. From its wheel yep. head. They definitely, like, some people use the wire tool and it's a little bit uneven. Yeah. And trimming will fix that. Yes. Right? Yes. Which, by the way, I should mention, um, the tool that you were talking about earlier with the little spirals at the oh, bottom. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That is a tool that is primarily made by a company called Dirty Girls. Oh! Yeah. Oh, yeah, I've heard of them. They're yes. like, a, like all like women, women owned yes. pottery, uh, sort of ceramics, uh, tool supply company, right? Yeah. They make a That's lot of cool. texture tools like that. Hell yeah. And if you're looking for that tool specifically, cause I feel like some of you are listening right now. I'm like, I know what the, I don't know where to get it though. Yeah. Just Google dirty girls, pottery tools. And Sweet. I mean, like make sure to put pottery tools. Yeah. <laughs> make sure to put pottery tools. Yeah. I know your search history. Mm -hmm. I see you. We see you. I see you a little too much. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, boys, I would say. Oh, 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 no, oh, no. <laughs> yep. But those are the two primary reasons that most yeah. people trim their bottoms. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I have pretty much always trimmed my pots. Like, I think I went through a period of time, maybe like six years ago, where mm. I didn't trim my pots, but I also didn't like... I, I did not take very good care of the bottoms. Yeah. And, you know, and I think, so for, for me, one of the reasons I ended up, like, instead of instead of deciding to not trim my pieces, but just learn how to take better care of the bottoms, mm -hmm. like, I, one of the main reasons that I do trim my pieces is because my favorite way to sign my work, as some of you might know, um, is to have my little insignia on a raised little stamp of clay so that right. it looks like a wax seal, right? Yes. So I can't really do that if the piece is completely flat. Yeah, you'd have to put it somewhere else. You'd have to like yeah. press the stamp super hard into the clay body at a certain stage. Yeah, but and then like the bottom would like warp a little, warp up, and it's just yeah. Yeah, yeah. It, it's a little bit easier if you trim your feet to put the signature, your maker's mark, inside the bottom of the feet. Yes. That's that's another. That, that's what I'm saying is like 20% of it's that and I'll say 80% of it's like you're really just leveling out your pot. <laughs> yeah. But definitely there are definitely people uh, I think uh, what's his name? He makes a bunch of slip cast cups. Uh, Hammerly? Hammerly. For I think Hammerly? He, yes. Yeah. He just has like the signature on the side. He has like a little metal stamp. Oh. Um, I don't think he puts them on the bottom. Actually I think he does now. Because I've he? seen I've seen his, his plaster molds uh -huh. and his plaster molds include, at least if I'm remembering correctly, include a like a bottom section. Oh I so see. So that his his signature is on the is on the bottom of the no, cup. No, you're right. But I think he, I'm thinking about someone else. Maybe he used to though. But that is another option is like yeah. for, for people to like because if you don't want to sign your work on the bottom, oh yeah. You know, there are folks who sign their work on the on the side as well. So that's like a that's like another option. Well, after a while, a lot of us just get stamped. Like you and I both have stamps. Yeah. But we stamp with clay and then we add the clay onto our clay mm -hmm. in a certain stage so it fuses correctly. But a lot of people, after a certain amount of time, they just get like little metal push-ins. Yeah, those are cool. You know? And yeah. so it's hard enough. Like rubber kind of bends. The metal's hard enough to push into the clay body. Yeah. So you, yeah. And I, I do love those. Yeah. The thing the thing that I like about those, and I know this is diverging a little bit from the topic of feet specifically, oh, but good. the thing that's nice about like those more, like those metal stamps is that like, like let's say someone buys one of my mugs at at a you know at a convention right. when conventions when i when i feel comfortable going to conventions right because right? they're happening but i'm like Meh, not yet right yeah 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 but if they then forget like either they lose my business card or basically unless unless you have like a signed name on the bottom of your pieces mm -hmm. there's not really like a way for you to search the artist yeah so so that's the nice thing about those metal stamps is that you can they can be made like fine enough so that if you wanted to like stamp your name into the bottom of the piece you can you can do that by the way i should say it almost it almost never helps what to look at the signature it helps for us oh because we realize other artists signatures because yeah. we see so many of them but uh -huh. like 
If you didn't know who I was as an artist and you turned my cup upside down yeah. at the bottom, you'd be like, I just tells me nothing. Who the hell is this guy? It doesn't yeah. say my name. Yeah. yeah. It does, it's not like I have a, a, a anagram of my, you know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. it's just a symbol. Yeah. But to a lot of other artists, especially if you're a, a ceramic artist or a potter yourself, you look at the bottom and your brain scours like, oh, right, do I know this symbol? Have I seen it before? Where yeah. like, who is this? And then you go, oh, that's Dante's symbol. That's yeah. Lindsay's symbol. You know? Yeah. Uh, I, w- I love the idea of like thousands of years from now, they find our pieces and they go, oh, this is yeah. this is early Dante's work or early Lindsay's oh. work. And just, that would be great. But this, I was glazing some cups because, you know, for my, I was making wedding gifts. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was glazing my cups and I had to do like spiller, <laughs> spiller. I had to do a bunch of filler space for my kiln, so I got a bunch of like, you know, we save stuff that's kind of oh, big, and yeah. we're like, I'm not gonna glaze that, yeah, because it might turn out bad, but it's good in its unperfected form right mm-hmm. now. I got a bunch of pieces that are traditionally what you would consider Japanese shapes, you know, with the tiny holes and the big bodies, where like they're yes. big, round, kind of like moon jars, even though Ooh, moon jars are Korean. Yeah. And I was pouring glaze down this tiny little hole, <gasps> and my mom was like, "Why? They can't see in there anyway." And I was like, "No, you don't understand." Thousands of years from now, they're going to know that I stayed up (laughs) right before my wedding night for hours (laughs) on end, and I had the craft integrity to glaze even the inside of the... This this historian's going to be like, oh, Dante was probably on his third day of no sleep. Oh, my God. Probably had to pee. That Uh, jar jar over there is probably his leftovers. Oh, God. (laughs) And he still had the artistic integrity to glaze the inside of the piece. May may you be so famous (laughs) as to necessitate (laughs) such study. Cheers to that, mate. But then I I glazed the next piece, and I didn't glaze the inside. And she's like, what? I just saw you. And I was like, oh, well, that piece is trash. Oh, yeah. (laughs) I hate that piece. Oh, my God. That's why I didn't do anything with it. I love that. I love that. All right, well, bringing it back to Sorry, feet yeah. <laughs> specifically. No, I, I was off on that on that tangent yeah. with you. I actually really want to talk more about signatures, but we'll maybe either save that to the end of the episode. Yeah. Because I love like stories about how people come up with their signatures. But right. So, so one of the other things that I find like the most interesting about feet mm-hmm. huh, um, is <laughs> I'm mature. I'm a mature adult. Um, is I like how they can either, how they can affect the visual weight of a cup. A hundred percent. Yeah. Like whether or not like, like how wide it is, how chunky or fine and delicate the, like any, any, you know, shapes that you carve into or trim, trim away at the bottom of the cup. Like that makes such a big difference. Like it's one of my favorite things to point out to students. Cause like when I used to volunteer at Sac City, um, you know, it's like those little things that when you're first starting out in ceramics, you're like, why does this look weird? Like, why does yeah. this not look like big and, body? Little yeah. Feet. Yeah. Yeah. And I remember when I was first learning how to make steins, I, I went on to Pinterest and I like looked up a bunch of stuff and I was like, why the hell are my steins like not looking right? Like something's yeah. off about them. And then I was like, oh yeah. Like the feet, the, the, the foot, my foot is not big enough compared to the body compared to the body and compared to the lip so for like so when you're looking at the feel the visual like weight of your piece it's like okay what are the proportions of and because for me i don't always look as much at the body i tend to compare mostly the um the lip yes to the foot and i will try and like like with my goblets i try and have the uh the inner Wait, how do I do it? I have the inner diameter of the lip of the of the goblet mm-hmm. match the external diameter of the foot. Yeah, that's so that yeah. there's some sense of like symmetry. But that's a good you, general rule. Yeah, yeah. But you were talking earlier before we got on about like the rule of thirds. So yeah. tell me about this rule of thirds. I was, I was taught the same rule that you were taught, where yeah. where Yosho was like, if you're gonna make a cup or anything like that. Generally speaking, you want to make the lip of the piece, or the very top of the piece, mm-hmm. around the same diameter as the bottom of the piece. Mm. And that, like, it doesn't have to be exactly the same, but if you make your mouth super wide and spread open like a bouquet of flowers, yeah, yeah, yeah. and then you make the foot super nice and tucked in, mm-hmm. it just looks weird. It's not to say that it can't be used in the art world, yeah. but, like, if I made a tiny, like, if I made a tiny, tiny, tiny foot like this, yeah. like this one right here. Yeah, yeah, and, and for, I, our, for our listeners, it's the foot is, like... On a teacup. It's, 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 yeah, on a teacup, and the, the... Inch and a half at most. Yeah, 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 yeah. In the entire circle. And then I put it on, like, one of your steins. Mm-hmm. It would look super weird. If this foot... Yeah. ...was on oh. that, that, right, that stein behind you... Yes. It would yes. look super weird, because it's right. super tiny in comparison to the rest of the body... Even if I made the mouth super small, 
And so in order to kind of make that even out, he's like, yeah, you should kind of, you should make the mouth at least a half to a third of the body, and the foot should kind of be near the same s diameter as the mouth. Uh, and yeah. I'm, just to make it all, the way he explained it, honestly, mm -hmm. is that your pot is a story, mm. right? And your beginning of the story, if you have a small foot, it's real light. And you yeah. want a lot of meat in the middle, or sometimes you want a light middle. Sometimes you want a heavy end, but they, you can't have like a light beginning, a super heavy middle, Meh. and then a super, he goes, the story just isn't, doesn't hmm. flow correctly if you that, do that. That's interesting. That's how, un you un know. Unless you're wanting to, because of course I'm- Unless you do it on purpose. I'm being, yeah, I was going to say, because yeah. I, I know I tend to be a little bit of a contrarian. So no, I'm you're like, right. But otherwise, if you think of it this other way. Yeah. But yeah, it's like, it's like, unless you are wanting to specifically play with like- with proportions yeah. and kind of like, cause I, I recently made a, uh, well, anyway, our listeners wouldn't be able to see anyway, yeah. but I recently made, um, cups that are smaller squatter, but they're like, they're the bottom at about the one third mark from yeah. like moving from the bottom up. Yes. The piece is really wide and then it moves to a more, a more narrow mouth, but the foot is kind of small, Yes. but it's like, I was specifically wanting to like, play with that proportion of having like a chonky body, but a, a delicate foot because I wanted the piece to have visual lift. I see. Right? Yeah. So, but yeah, but it's about like intentionality. Cause I think often what happens, especially with like beginning pieces mm -hmm. is that like the proportions will be like just slightly off, yeah. but off in a way where it doesn't look intentional. Yeah. So sometimes exaggerating those, the difference between the proportions, between the lip, the body and the foot oh, yeah. can make a piece look more intentional. Even if it's still like crazy wide lip, narrow body, yeah. super big foot, you know, like you can you can play with those things, but it looks I feel like so much about like making things look good, even if it's quote unquote weird. Yeah. It's about like does it look like it's done on in, purpose. On purpose. Yeah. Yeah. Working even where like I it, I think <laughs> every artist does this, where like you mess up a piece and you're like, oh, Mm -hmm. Well, I have to make it look like I did it on purpose. Like work, <laughs> working yes. with your mistakes, you know what yes. I mean? Yeah, you're really, definitely. You're really just like, if you're past the point of no return, you just have to work with your mistake. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it looks like you messed up. Yeah, or you just start a new piece. Or you start a new piece. <laughs> but, but yeah, but I agree with you. It's like if you've, yeah. You've gone you, down the road. Yeah, if you've gone down the road, keep, keep, keep. Keep on, just keep swimming, just keep swimming. Yeah, no, de definitely. <laughs> yeah. There is, um, there is another thing. So like, you can definitely put stuff on your, not put stuff on your pot, but you can definitely make pieces of your pot that enhance the foot as well. Mm. Oh, so, explain me. Right, so I can't, I'm not allowed, Twitter said I can't explain anything. <laughs> that's I'm mansplaining, I'm that's different. Sorry, yeah, that's true. <laughs> um, so what I used, to, well, I still kind of do it actually, mm. is... You know, most people, when they trim a bottom, they trim their foot, they round out the bottom, like, right here. You can, oh, yeah, yeah, you can't right see it, here. but, like, basically they create a... A flange? Yeah. It's like an upside-down yeah. V-shape? Yes, yes, upside-down V-shape, and then there's a V-shape kind of cutting into the... Yes. Into the body of the piece, and then it rounds out to the rest of the cup. That gives your piece I wish so to... much... <laughs> I I would, yeah. Like, what are people going to do? Like, the YouTube people new... are going to see this, but yeah. the, the, list, the podcast <laughs> listeners are like... I don't the? understand why they're laughing. <laughs> We're giving like alien traffic signals. <laughs> alien traffic signals. <laughs> As we describe pots. <laughs> Pretty much. We're visualizing a pot together, but it's yeah. not working. <laughs> you know what? We just need to Vulcan mind meld this. It'll be a lot easier. Yeah. We'll just create a hive mind. Anyway, carry on. <laughs> the new army. Sorry. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> um, yeah. So what I did for quite some time is because I wanted my pieces to look more delicate, be mm -hmm. a little bit more lifted instead of kind of bringing in the foot, mm -hmm. I would just leave that trim part. So I turn the pot upside down. Oh, hold on. <laughs> I put the pot upside down. I would trim yeah. and make that angle that you usually do when you trim. Oh, yeah, yeah. And I would just leave the angle. So it would look like an upside down V essentially. Oh, okay. Yeah. And yeah, that yeah. gave a lot of lift to my piece. I also use mm. it as like a glaze. I know I'm getting into it. I also use Come it on. as like a glaze line where, oh, you know, you put yeah, a line yeah. in your piece. Yeah. And it's like a moat. So the glaze has to go over that line to run off the pot. Yes, yes. I remember uh, Florian Gatsby does something similar. Yeah. yeah. Gives you a little bit more wiggle room. It doesn't save your pot, mm -hmm. but like if you put a line at the bottom of your pot. Like actually like in A line. Like an actual, yeah, like a like a ridge like of a ridge. clay. Yeah. Yes. I, I, like a physical ridge of clay. A physical ridge or like a moat or yeah. like when you're trimming, you just stay at near the bottom of your pot, just put a line down there. So if you over glaze, your glaze has to go over that little line. Yeah. And so it, it doesn't, 
prevent <laughs> overglazing, mm. but it helps. Yeah, if lot. it's like if it's like on the edge, it's on the edge, yeah, it can, it can help a little bit, it's especially if you zone. have like a runny runny glaze. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, especially if you if you're like like John. John does a yeah. lot of like melty glazes. Mm -hmm. He would. He would probably, he probably does, actually. Yeah. He probably does have, like, a glaze line at the bottom. I just don't mm. see it a lot. Yeah. Well, we're gonna have to buy one of his pieces and find out. <laughs> or, unless you <laughs> or if one of our listeners or viewers has a uh, John the Potter Pot, you know, that DM. You don't want one. Do you, no, no, no. Not like, not like you don't want one, but I was gonna say, like, DM us. DM us. At Lindsay Yeah, and show Billy, us. At Earth Nation Ceramics. Uh, I tag was, us. I was gonna bug him at Enseca, but I don't think he's going. Oh. Uh, I talked to him and he's, he's like, I'm not going. Yeah, yeah, no, that's fair. I was gonna do a mug trade. He's, he's try, probably trying to be safe. I get yeah, it. Yeah, I feel yeah, it. For sure. Well, he's also got a new wee babe. That's true. So, he's yeah. on his third? I think so. Yay! Congratulations! Super exciting. Anyway, okay, so. Let's talk about, well, we got two options here. Yeah. Okay, so since actually, okay, well, haha, <laughs> segue. Okay. This is appropriate. Okay. So glazing, for glazing the underneath of pots, like let's say you've trimmed your piece. Yeah. And you have created, like as you've trimmed away, you've created like a well yes. in the center, in the center of the bottom of your piece. Usually where the, 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 where the symbol goes. goes. Right. Yeah. So there's the option to glaze or not glaze that part. Uh, do you have any opinions on this? Because I, I, I have a lot of them. <laughs> uh, you know, I don't really care that much, to be honest. Like, I I glaze, I do glaze that underneath for the most part. Like, there's been a few times where I haven't. Same. Yeah. Um, but I think, like, I think if I were to not glaze the underside, it would have to be because I was wanting to highlight the, like, raw clay body yes. in other design aspects of the mug. But if the whole mug is glazed and just the underside isn't, I, I don't, I don't know. I mean, if, I don't know. I mean, I guess I just, I kind of do, but maybe that's just more out of, out of habit than, than any intentional, like, you know. I have, yeah. I have the same way of thinking about it as you do, except for at the end of my road, I say, it feels less complete. To me, mm. like when I look at the when I look at the entire thing and it's all glazed, and I look at the bottom and part of it's not glazed, even if it's the part that most people can't see, mm -hmm. my brain goes, "Did what? Well, just glaze it?" Yeah, like is it intentional? Or, yeah, like, yeah. Did you not yeah. glaze it because most people wouldn't see it, or did you did you not glaze it because your symbol's there? Do you want like if, mm. unless there's a reason for me to not glaze it, much like yourself, I'm gonna glaze it most of the time. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I know it's another part to take care of the pot, but that goes back to like the. Like, I'm going to take care of the bottom a little bit. Yeah. I'm, you know what I mean? Yeah. You got to take care of the bottom. got to take care I was like, you I was got, going there. You got, I'm like, mm. you, Yeah, you take care of the bottoms. Bottoms take care of you. I'll tell you what. Oh, my God. I'll tell you what. <laughs> oh, we're going to get banned. Tell you we're going to get banned one of these days and be like, they crossed the line. You, you, oh, man. We are just talking about pottery. Just uh, pottery. Just pottery. Yeah. It's nothing big. We're tripping. Yeah. <laughs> tell you what. There used to be a sign in Yosho's studio that said a clean bottom is a happy bottom, and it was from the, the kiln operator. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Her name was Gina, and she was oh. like, she's just tired of students, like, just dipping their stuff and putting it on the shelf and not. Oh, yeah, that's a... She would not put your pot in the kiln if you... That's, I think that's, I think that's good. A hundred percent. She'd be like, no, clean it or your work doesn't get done. Yeah. Well, I, I feel like it's because, again, like, a lot of beginners kind of yeah. forget that, like, oh, yeah, like, especially if you're, I don't know, like, I... I feel like for people who are, who, I doubt that anyone listening, let me put it this way, I doubt that anyone listening to this podcast, like, is as flippant about ceramics as to repeatedly be like, oh yeah, I'm not gonna, like, glaze yeah. the bottom of it, but I, I don't know, yeah, I remember in the, in the, at Sac City, we ran into that a lot, where it's like people who are just maybe not super invested yeah. in the class are just like, oh, right, I'll glaze it real quick, and then it's like, oh my gosh, the poor studio technician, the amount she of had people, the patience of a saint, alright. The amount of people who take a pottery class because they think it's gonna be easy, yeah. only, right, <laughs> only to find out that it's really not easy. Welcome to the fire! <laughs> like, at the level that I'm at right now, my brain kind of goes, I think math would have been easier. Mm. Like, I always complain about algebra, but I think algebra would have legitimately been easier if I just picked a <laughs> career in teaching people math. Because there's so many variables to pottery, but math is like, you're right or you're wrong. Like, yeah. there's a couple ways to do one thing, but you always get the same answer most of the time. Mm -hmm. Like, Unless you start getting into that super theoretical stuff, but that's a whole other, like, yeah, that's a whole other ballgame. Get into the quantums. Yeah, yeah. That yeah. actually reminds me. Mm -hmm. Segway. Segway? Um, so, talking about feet and, like, fanciness... 
because because I think about like you're like you're saying with math like math has like a right or wrong but like so much of ceramics is just like mm -hmm. stylistic choice mm -hmm. another thing with feet is that like how like how you choose to create a sense of style with the feet mm -hmm. like like again like looking at different um like how do I say like looking at different like cultural ways of doing feet like I feel like we all kind of have like if I were to say a Japanese teacup yes. you would probably like there's an image that comes to mind absolutely if I were to say Stein you have something like similar and so when I think about like feet like if I were to think of like English teacup like I think of something with like delicate details fine like maybe like a lot of a decent amount of ornamentation yeah but like small features and like I think that's one thing that I always found really interesting about about like design in general yeah is the is the is the sort of the rule that if you want something to look fancy and delicate make the make the elements of decoration small and delicate yes and if you want something to look like chunky sturdy yes. uh you know uh, uh for function only functioning well not necessarily function only, only cuz you can yeah. have function and style right. but it's like the 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 cultural association with a stein yeah. are different than the cultural associations with an english teacup yeah right especially cool yeah yeah so it's like there's different ways that you can explore those stylistic themes with feet yeah, you no. know, and I know I'm just kind of stating the obvious here, but it's just like, isn't that cool? Isn't I mean, design cool the way our brains go? If it's small, it's fancy. <laughs> if it's big, it's sturdy. Well, I like I'm to like... think it's the same way that you you would call like something that's round and blobby bob, but you would yeah. call something that's spiky like kiki. You yeah. Know? But your brain your brain recognizes like, <laughs> oh, kiki is clearly the spiky one or the fork and the blobby yeah. one because your brain like based off of how just the world generally works in the laws of the universe yeah oh and also the culture that you're brought up in right of course obviously so much of that is cultural as well and that's the awesome thing is when you look at certain pot like like i really really dislike certain cultures of pottery <laughs> Ooh. a lot Ooh, hot I'm, take. Not, I'm not gonna say which ones because uh, well. y'all be getting extra offended uh. over, no, over preferences <laughs> okay all right well let's 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 go, let's go into why like yeah. what what elements do you not? Would you dislike? Okay, so let's let's. I'm just gonna put it out there. Yo, wait, wait, don't. I, I'm not gonna you, tell you what it is. Okay, yeah. I'm gonna give you hints though. I hate the color yellow, and bright yellows and bright reds. I hate them, and I hate flowers on pots. Why do you hate flowers on pots? They're just for me. They're base. For me, they're like any every single pot has like a flower or a cat on it. Mm. So whenever I see it, I'm like, yeah, oh, yeah. Like it's it's like extraordinary. I'm like, eh. So there is actually, I have an interesting like pushback to that. Yeah, and no, the reason I do you should push back. Okay, I'm gonna do it. But the reason I do is because I actually largely have that same association. Yeah. But like, I can't. I wish. Oh, I wish I could remember who. I really wish I could remember the artist who like they were doing their master's thesis about this. Yeah. And they were essentially talking about how within like the art and like quote unquote craft world. Yeah. Um, designs with a feminine aspect to them mm -hmm. are undervalued compared to designs that have a more traditionally like masculine sort of appeal huh. so yeah. the whole like lines of dinnerware that ha had like flowers or like you know like yeah. put like cooking pots that say flower on it or yeah. like just historically they have been considered like not as valuable or not as interesting as as like other yeah. again like more masculine things so there's a there's a push and a pull there because on the one hand like it's so now it's so like ubiquitous and it has like we can look at a, a pot with a flower on it and again depending on the style of how it's done right we have like stereotypes and associations that come up with like okay like the person who made this piece or like it's 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 level of interest and i see and on top of that like it's fine also if just like pots with flowers aren't necessarily your thing. Yeah. That, that's not what I'm saying. I'm yeah, saying no, yeah, like yeah. just because you don't like that doesn't mean you're like sexist or something. Right. But I think it is important to look at how the style of decoration connects with like historical uh, like attitudes around feminine art versus masculine art and what is valued and what is not. I will say, I will, I will say this as a separate thing. I love flowers. <laughs> I love flowers. I love, okay. I love yes. the color pink. Things that are historically right. feminine, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I have no real issue with them. I hate flowers on pottery. <laughs> oh, 
okay. All right. I tell me, no, tell me why you don't like. I have no real issue. Is it's it, like Star Trek it, versus Star Wars. I don't hate Star Wars. I'm just a Star Trek person. Yeah. Cats versus dogs. I don't hate cats. I'm just a dog person. That's 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 fair. You I know. don't hate flowers. We can we can agree to disagree about cats. Look, also, I love cats and dogs. So really, I'm I'm just a, I'm just a. I was about to say something that was gonna sound bad. Um, <laughs> I just love all animals. If so. I if I would like. You know those dudes who get dogs who's like, oh, cute dogs get girls at the park. Oh, right, right. I'm that girl. <laughs> Hit me. Yeah. I would date you if you had a cute dog. <laughs> you hear that, you, lady ladders and gentle You would have gotten me very me. easily. I would have been like, oh, but the weird thing is like after I pipe you down, I would go play with your dog. You pipe you down? What is that? Yeah, you do a little construction work. Lay some pipe. Oh my God. Oh my God, that took way too long. <laughs> <laughs> You know? Ah, yes. Put a hard hat on for mm. safety. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Oh, bless our partners who deal with us. Good lord. Um, I will I will say I don't like flowers. I don't like the color red and yellow, and there seems to be a certain culture of pottery especially at the the production level that does like just <laughs> flowers in red and yellow and brown clay. Oh. That's their whole thing. And like anytime I look at it, I'm like, yeah, of course. Like I, I don't like it. I'm not I'm not gonna say a lot of people right now are like, yeah, I know which one it is. I think I kinda know what you're talking about. Um, and and it I, yeah, it's uh... I do like Egyptian pottery, but I will I will say like like really old found Egyptian pottery just seems to be super angular. Yeah. And whenever I see it I'm like, oh that's just pots with edges no. and I don't hate it but like that's kind of all you guys did for a while granted they I... did discover colors like they would oh. crush up a lot of minerals yeah. put them in their pots they 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 really paved the way they're really the progenitors of a lot yeah. of colors that we use today but like I, could, I can't do the I can't I can't do triangular cups anymore uh. <laughs> I can't do it I I actually love seeing the pottery in the um oh my god I can't remember the name of the museum but it was it was a, a, a historical museum uh, or archaeological museum in um, in Cairo. Yes. So I was lucky when I was lucky enough to get to to go to Egypt. It was actually it was super cool to get to see those pieces in yeah. person because there was any really interesting different styles. But like I think like hmm, I guess what I'm hearing and I'm curious and about like how this relates to I don't know, I guess well because because we're talking about feet we're also talking about style in general and like it makes me think that part of what makes things interesting to you is like the and, and honestly to me in general is like is like how predictable something is like being Absolutely. able to look at something a thousand percent. and being like has this have i seen something like this before yes and the pieces that are most interesting and it's like especially i feel like in my like in my sculptural work and to some degree like in my own like in my functional work mm. like i like being able to make things where you look at it and you're like your brain isn't quite sure how to categorize it yeah and so if you can, if you're looking at something, and again, not to say that the thing that your brain categorizes is, isn't good, isn't good or yeah. it doesn't have value. Cause you know, flowers or like other styles of pottery, like what you're kind of oh, talking about. there's some about. beautiful like, flowers out there. Yeah. 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 And they're all like, those are all, you know, completely valid forums of, of expression. And they have, they have a quality and they have an audience for their own they audience their that place. likes that kind of thing. But I think I'm kind of with you where it's like, it's nice to be able to look at something and be like, I am not sure what you are. Yeah. If I watch a movie and I can tell the end, if I watch a movie and I can tell which two characters are going to fall in love in the first five minutes oh and God. it's not a lot. Yeah. I'm don't, I don't care about it. Yeah. Like I'm, I'm also, su and on the same level with the same energy, I'm super tired of watching a movie and then they like give me a very predictable thing that's going to happen because it caters to the most baseline of people. Mm. Like, whenever there's a movie about, like, saving the world, and, you know, like, there's a guy there, and there's a girl there, and they're really <laughs> close. Oh, and, oh. like, all of a sudden, he turns to her, and I'm like, I swear to God, if they kiss right now while the world's ending, if they start <sighs> slapping cheeks while the, and then they and then they do, and I'm like, the world's ending, can you not? Yeah. Can you stop sticking? Can I just have, like, a badass character, please? Yeah. I don't care what their gender is. I don't care what they look like. I just want them to like be cool and not not have like romance shoved down their throat because that's what like people like. Yeah, that's what yeah. people like respond to in movies, and the movie creators know that. So like, I assume there's an artist somewhere making movies, and they're like, we gotta put a love story in there, and you're like, they're like, yeah. why? It's a good movie by itself, and they're mm -hmm. like, 
I don't know, just make up a token dude character who falls in love with the nah. male and female character. Yeah. Because that's what people want right now. <laughs> and, like, and every time you feed into that and every time you buy that, you're just pushing that more into the culture. More and more mm. and more. And that's, I, I don't know. You're, you're right, though. Yeah. If I can tell what's going to happen, I don't want to see it. Mm -hmm. Most of the time. Yeah. There's definitely times where it's really well. Like, this teapot right there has flowers on it. Yeah. Beautifully done. Mm -hmm. Right? It's also mass-produced, I'm sorry. It is also mass-produced. Yeah. But at least, <laughs> at least it has a certain architectural, yeah. uh, a certain style I, that I enjoy. Yeah. And I like it. My aunt gave it to me. But there's definitely... Uh, certain cultures make the same like type of pot over and over again. I'm like, all right. I feel like, oh, I feel like that's like, that's like treading the line though. Yeah. With like, like saying, oh yeah, different cultures. Cause like ascribing. It's like English pottery. I can't stand English pottery. Yeah. It's just porcelain with gold flowers on it. <laughs> that's it. That's all you have. Yeah. That's, uh, I don't want to see any more well, of it. It's a, it's a. It also harkens back to a time where they took things and recipes that didn't belong to them. Oh, yeah, that's why that's they used true. to call it China. So whenever yeah. I see it, I'm like, you're fetishizing porcelain, but realistically, oh. you're just fetishizing a certain time in history in which took something that doesn't belong to you again from a culture that didn't belong to you again. Like, I yeah, don't, I don't yeah. like any of it. I don't. Yeah. I'm not a porcelain, like, English pottery collector. Yeah. The history behind it and how massively produced it is, but people act like it's God's gift to pottery. Mm -hmm. Can't stand it. Yeah, no, I, I I hear you there. Like, I think, like, ceramics, like, you don't, how do I say? Like, I, I, like, art does not have to be political by any means to be, like, valued, but it is interesting, and I think it, in some degrees, it's important to at least know, like, the history of some of that. And admit it, like, I'm still learning it myself. Absolutely, yeah. Um, but yeah, maybe we should do an episode on that someday, just, like, kind of talking about, I mean, that'd be a, that's a, that's a, that's a lot. That's a, there's a, that lot a lot that goes into that conversation, but just a little bit, like an intro to why porcelain is. <laughs> it's gonna, it's yeah. gonna tread the supremacy line a little bit. It's, it's gonna like one of us at some point is gonna be like, if you're really into this one thing, here's the history of it. It's not all that great. <laughs> yeah, but it's it's important though. Like ceramics yeah, and absolutely. pottery is like it's got you know, it's I mean it's one of the oldest mediums of humankind. Yeah. So you know what I do love Aztec pottery. Uh. <sighs> It's so based. It's so like we made this because we had to. We needed it. You know, like we we use this to carry stuff. Most of the time, it's brown clay. You know, like I love it so much. Okay. I don't know. Yeah. Let's same thing with Grecian pottery. Like Grecian pottery is either like super artistic with like black sgraffito, underglaze, slip, or it's like I held my grain in this. Yeah. <laughs> I had I mean, to make I, this to hold my grain. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think there's, I think there's a lot of, there's yeah. a lot of. That, for like, all cultures. Yeah, there's definitely there's definitely a functional and a capital A art, as you would say. Yeah, right. Portion of every culture with ceramic right. artwork. Yeah, yeah. And I'm very uh, there's a line in between where they take like decoration or art art, and then they take functional and they combine them, mm -hmm. and that's become the new production because people realize like, oh, that's fancy. Yeah. But it becomes oversaturated in the market that I go. I don't really like it anymore. Yeah. You kind of beat a dead horse. It kind of, yeah, it feels predictable again. Yeah, it yeah. feels too predictable. And I'm like, I don't, I don't like it. Yeah. I can't, if my mom comes back with another red and yellow flower pot <laughs> with brown clay on it, uh, with a rope tied around the top, I'm going to lose it. I'm going to lose it. Yeah. And then she's like, why don't you make this for me? And I'm like, I don't like the colors red and yellow. Yeah. I don't, like, I don't even like yeah. flowers on pots. Yeah. I love flowers. Not on pots. Yeah. Yeah. So feet. <laughs> 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 All right. Is there is there anything else like? Because essentially what we talked about, we talked about trimming versus not trimming, yeah. glazing versus not glazing the underside of the bottoms. Yeah. Uh, how you can play with the proportions of a pot yeah. to play with its visual weight. Absolutely. And we've talked about fi fanciness in terms of like making a something with like if the if the decorative features are chunky if they're bigger they they convey a sense of like sturdiness and brrr, like toughness versus fine details conveying a sense of fanciness yeah um is there any anything else that you're thinking about uh for feet that you think would be helpful for our viewers and listeners to well, to consider i would like to say as a general as, as a general rule a lot of the things we talked about today especially culturally with like pottery culture are kind of like things that we just view in that sense, but there is definitely a place, one of my favorite places actually, 
where you can make, I don't know what it's called. I call it contradiction art or contrast art. Oh, okay. Where like you make something super big and chunky, but mm. you make the foot super small on purpose. Tiny. <gasps> yeah, or you'll yes. do, like you'll make an ultra big foot and a super small pot. Mm. Just to just like because it elicits that emotion. Yeah. Out of people and yeah. good art should make you feel something. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. And I love that. Yeah. Oh, I love I love seeing a piece that is half super clean. Like the artist really made a pristine porcelain pot mm. and they marry it together like a super messed up oh yeah piece of the like, pot yeah oh it's, yeah it's gorgeous I, I i love i love that idea of like playing like like of like doing that like making yeah. like these crazy pieces so it's like if you were especially if you were just starting out with ceramics or it's like you're, you're wanting you've like been making things you're like how do i how do i change things like experiment experiment yeah. like make experiment. make something with a unfunctionally tiny foot make something with a big big old foot yeah you know don't corner yourself too early like, yeah don't i wouldn't say don't corner yourself at all but don't don't think like people want cups so i have to train myself to make cups i just began this art i'm gonna make cups and cups are all i'm gonna make until i sell more cups and cups <laughs> like, just, ex you have time yeah. experiment and also you can if you decide you really like making cups Go for it. But then you also you can play with the proportions of the foot, the Absolutely. width of the body. You know, like, like, yeah, like exper experiment and see Make like- Make weird cups. Yeah, and look at reference photos. That's the other, that's always like, I'm like reference photos, experimentation and reference photos, because like, again, looking at something and being like, why does this not look right? Yeah. Sometimes looking and like following like, and actually like, like I feel like so much of it is like knowing what to look at. So it's like, if you're wanting to explore feet, which is a weird sentence to say. Um, I'm no king. Find, <laughs> find some artists and look at look at the look at the proportions. Like think about the rule of thirds. Mm -hmm. Like okay, does the outside of the cup line of the of the foot line up with any other aspects of the cup? Like is it you know when I look at this, does it like what kind of adjectives come to mind? Does it look fancy? Does it look sturdy? Does it look you know? And so I feel like the more that you practice looking at other pieces and describing in greater detail what it looks like, mm -hmm. um, the easier it is to replicate that within your own work. Right. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah. Especially with practice. Yeah. Especially with practice. Yeah. People can explain how they made a piece, but until you do it yourself, like 90% of that knowledge is doing it. Yeah. You know, it's, we're, we're a hands-on craft. So it's, mm -hmm. you know, also I will say there's a, there's a definite, awesome part of the community that doesn't trim their foot but they make feet if that makes sense so like they will get their pot oh yeah, yes, like, they'll that's put like right. little dots yes. or little paw prints yeah and stamp onto the and then they'll just get little balls and put them at the bottom of their pot and that's yeah. their feet that's the whole thing we didn't even talk about like the sculptural aspect that yeah. you can do with feet there's so much yeah, yeah. oh my god yeah well after listening to this episode tag us on Instagram or or the other social medias and tell us do you like feet? That's not what I want to ask. Tag me on Tag Twitter and tell me if you got that foot fetish. <laughs> <laughs> tell us what you think about feet on pottery and what you like to do if you're experimenting with anything pottery feet related. Dante! for today. Thank you for listening to The Mud Peddlers with Lindsay M. Dillon and Dante of Earth Nation. Want to say hi and see what Dante and I are working on in our studios? Check out the show notes for links to our websites and social media below. You can find me at lindsaymdillon.com. That's L-I-N-D-S-E-Y-M as in monster, D-I-L-L-O-N.com and on Etsy, Instagram, and Facebook, at Lindsay M. Dillon. And you can find me at Earth Nation Ceramics. It's spelled exactly how you think it's spelled, but you can also find me on my Facebook fan page and Instagram at the same name at Earth Nation Ceramics. If you enjoyed hanging out with us today, or you have a question or topic you'd like us to discuss, take a second to rate and review The Mud Peddlers in Apple Podcasts. It helps our podcast reach new listeners, and we really appreciate the feedback. Thanks again, and we'll catch you next time.